Hello, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, all of you to our webinar today. Uh, RICO IT Services is pleased to present Containing Ransomware Outbreaks, a new strategy for InfoSec leaders. We are honored and privileged to have a featured speaker here today, Trolls Erding, Chairman of the Advisory Board Center for Cybersecurity, World Economic Forum. My name is John Stewart. I'm the Vice President of IT Services Sales and Strategy for RICO USA. Uh, in addition, we also have Morton Gamelgard, the Executive Vice President of Bullwall LTD, who will be uh, speaking on the webinar also. Without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Trolls. But before, before I do that, I want to mention that we will have uh, a question and answer session at the end of our webinar today. You can post all of your questions in the chat. And at the end of the webinar, we will take all the questions and try to provide the best answers we can then. Um, and without further ado, I'll hand it over to Trolls. Thank you very much, John, for this kind introduction. And uh, also, uh, welcome to those of you who have taken time to listen to this webinar. I'm very uh, pleased to be able to give you maybe some of the more um, holistic view, the more uh, global view on the development of cyber security and also cyber crime in the next five to ten minutes. So the first slide that you have been presented for is the one in front of you where you can see that every year the World Economic Forum will ask more than 1,600 of the CEOs, the chairmen, or the, or the leaders of governments in the biggest companies and countries that are uh, partners with the World Economic Forum. And we ask them, as one of the many questions we ask them is, what do you keep you awake uh, when doing business or doing politics? And then they will, uh, from a list, they will show a number of, 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 of suggestions of those they are more concerned about. And as you can see here, the number two concern even though we have a pandemic, is cyber attack. And you can also see that number seven is on the list, which is data fraud, and number nine, which is that we uh, risk to, to not have a critical infrastructure intact during these days. So if you are personally a bit concerned about cybersecurity, I can assure you you're not alone. You're joined by the majority of the leaders in this world who also have this on, on, on the top of their head every day. So, and, and there is a reason for that, of course, and you can maybe see this in the next slide. In the old days, which is a couple of years ago, um, then the majority of changes to the world was influenced by superpowers, nations like the US, Russia, China, and other ones, and they, of course, still have a role to play. But out of, 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 of nothing has actually grown other super forces who also have a huge impact on our daily life. And these are the four that I'm showing you now. The first one is, of course, mobile technology and 5G. So the majority of users will skip the computer in the, in the future. Maybe continents will skip the computer like Africa and go directly to a mobile platform. 5G will accelerate the speed of the mobile technology and these platforms and also enable a lot of automated things like, like uh, uh, self-driving cars and, and other things will be boosted by the 5G. And it will also boost the number of, of users of the Internet from the present 3.25 billion people to approximately 7 billion people very, very fast. The next thing that has changed our life and will continue to change our life is the Internet of Things. Everything is connected. So we estimate in, in the World Economic Forum that we will have more than 55 billion devices connected to the Internet next year. And all over 80% of these devices will not have communication with a human being, but will be machine-to-machine -machine communication. That will also create uh, edge and clock computing and other things that will also move the, the, um, the pro processor power from the central level straight out to the Internet of Things devices. That will also generate a different attack vector scenario, and there will be lots of ways where criminals can also misuse this. So now we have more users and we have more things connected to the Internet. So we produce much, much more data. And that's why cloud computing as the third factor will increase our ability to store. So everything will be connected. Everything will be sensing. Everything will be stored. And everything will be used, either stolen or sold or 
the fourth one used by artificial intelligence. This will be another frontier in the fight between East and West in the future, the ability to actually use the data you have access to, which will be huge, is key. So these are the drivers, ladies and gentlemen, that we have to keep in mind. And we have also seen in the last uh, year that we have had a digital transformation that equivalents three years but done in three months. And I'll come back to this a bit later. If you look at this slide here, I've tried to illustrate what is going to be connected, that everything will be connected from baby alarms to communication centers to airports, airplanes, cars, whatever, everything will be connected. And because of this, we will also see a lack of experience of these people who should secure these devices and the way that they communicate and make sure that we only allow the allow traffic and that we can ban what we don't want to have into our network. But we have probably a, a deficit of around 3 million people who are not so who we need jobs uh, to, to have jobs for in cybersecurity, but they are not educated yet. So that will also be some challenges that we will see, and that is why we need to look at security in a different way that we traditionally do. Then normally you would say that in the physical world, if you have a crime, you have law and uh, law enforcement to take care of that crime. That is because that there is normally a link between the geographical uh, place where the, the crime is, is committed, and therefore you have a police officer who has jurisdiction in that area. So you, you can call the police, and why don't we just call the police also for uh, cybersecurity violations? Here we see that due to the geopolitical tensions, I claim, and I'm a former police officer, that we actually Cybercrime cyber is a risk-free crime. We do not have the right instruments, the right conventions for police officers to work together. We might be able to work uh, jointly in cases like murder, drug trafficking, or maybe sexual assault, but you are not able to work together in cybercrime cases. That means that criminals in Russia can do crime without any risk from US, UK, European, or other law enforcement, and vice versa for that matter. So this is a risk-free crime. And because that criminals, they look at three factors, organized crime, when they want to see which area should we enter into, they look at what is the profit, what is the investment, and what is the risk. In cybercrime, there is a high profit, low investment, and non-risk. So you have to realize that there are no sheriff office, there are no FBI's you can call when you have a crime in cyber, you are alone in the trench. And that again moves a bit um, the responsibility back to the use of the data, to us who have the data, we need to be better to protect these data against violations because we cannot keep uh, crime down in this area. So what happened uh, during the impact of COVID-19? First of all, I think it's fair to say that nobody was prepared for this. Um, we have seen uh, that regions and maybe countries have been shut down, but we haven't ever seen a globe being shut down. And we had to do something to uh, keep the wheel spinning in the world. And I'm actually uh, quite impressed to see that we, during three weeks approximately, the businesses, global businesses, they moved out 1.2 billion people from offices to working from home. That is a fantastic achievement. And that also went extremely fast and probably also uh, with um, limited security uh, in, on top of, the, of our minds because we just need to get back and get in contact, have meetings, have sales, have marketing, uh, do everything that we normally would do in physical world to do this online. But this is the new normal. And even though that we are now in the process of vaccinating uh, the global population and we will be able to go back to, to, to days like before, I don't think, and the World Economic Forum doesn't think that we will go back to the old days. This is the new normal. You will see a much, much more flexible work market where people will work from home. They might also go in physically, but that will be much, much more blended. And that means also that the huge attack vectors that we have seen now, because we have much, much more distributed workforce, will continue. 
So as security guys, we need to take that into consideration. And last, in, in this slide, I want to emphasize that it's very, very important that you think risk, not threat. Everything is a threat. And you will see that loads of security companies will say, why don't you secure for this and this and this? You have to look at it as a threat to your business. If you are not a business who is doing anything the Russians or the Chinese are interested in, you can actually count out nation state attacks and only look at organized criminals. That's bad enough, but at least that you know you, have to, you can now lower your risk to these guys. This is very, very important in the way you look at how to prevent you from being a victim. The last slide I have before I hand it back uh, to, um, to the arrangers is this one. And I took it because um, ransomware is the only real crime in cyberspace uh, besides DDoS attacks, which will have everybody as a victim. Normally you will say, if I'm a bank, I have a specific victim who wants my, my money. If I'm a research and development function, they might need my recipe for the COVID vaccine or the next engine. Or uh, if I'm another company, they want this or this. But we are all due to the change and all the changes I've just shown to you, we are all so dependent on our internet connection. And that makes everybody a victim for ransomware. So ransomware is the only crime except for DDoS attacks that will attack a bank, a police station, a public service, a library, a university, a healthcare, everybody, because we need our connection. And that is why we will be tempted to pay ransom. And that is also why that you have seen a ransomware attack happens every 11 seconds, every day, every year. And that will unfortunately continue to progress in the same way. So more users, more dependency, more attacks. This is a cash cow. There are a number of ways where you can protect yourself, and this is the perfect, uh, purpose of this seminar, is to shed a bit of light on, on, on some of these last defenses. And I'm very, very happy now to, uh, to, to, to send my, uh, my speech over to John again about what is ransomware and why is it so successful. So thank you very much for listening so far, and good luck with the rest of the seminar. Thank you, Trolls. Really appreciate your uh, participation into the webinar today. I just wanted to touch very quickly on, you know, what is ransomware and why is it so prevalent today? Ransomware has really evolved into an enterprise-grade malware that holds computers and data files hostage, locks down entire systems swiftly, and brings business to a halt for days to months on end. Criminals are innovating new unknown methods continuously to defeat traditional signature-based methods of detection. Now more than ever, business leaders have a significant stake in securing data and intellectual capital to protect personal information, revenue, maintain customer loyalty, and secure shareholder value. There are new high-profile cases of ransomware attacks emerging every day across just about every industry you can imagine. You know, and the impact of ransomware goes far beyond just the ransom itself. You know, often there's no budget available for new technologies that are not part of the current security strategy. So what we find is a lot of organizations struggle with justifying the investment in multiple layers of security when they, they may have not been attacked before. But we wanted to show you a quick example of what a ransomware attack could do to an organization. Um, because it's more than just the cost of it, – it's, it's the cost of downtime and there are a bunch of other factors also. So if you look at a, an example of a 2,500-employee company, if they were attacked by ransomware, you know, and it's assumed that 80% of those employees are affected and 60% of them are dependent on IT availability, if you look at the average cost of a U.S. employee at $50 an hour, and the average downtime of a ransomware attack, which is 21 work days or 168 hours, you're looking at possible loss productivity of about $12.6 million in this example. Um, as you can see from our source coverware, the average downtime uh, for uh, an organization is about 168 hours in this example or 21 work days. So just the cost of downtime alone, in addition to the ransom, 
uh, produces a lot of revenue loss. Other, other issues around the cost of downtime is the cost of recovery, right? So if you don't have the right tools in place to prevent uh, and provide that last line of defense, you'll have to pay external recovery costs in addition to the ransom. In particular industries, if you're not protecting yourself, you could, you could face compliance fines and legal fees. We're looking at the revenue loss example, uh, the one that I just showed previously, your reputation in the marketplace. So if your reputation is that you haven't invested in the right tool sets to prevent um, ransomware attacks and other malware attacks, you could, you could face a loss in your reputation. And there's unexpected costs that come up with this in terms of potential other investments that you didn't plan for down the road. So I'll hand it over to Morton to kind of talk to you about a new approach to defending against ransomware, and I'll hand it over to him now. That's great, John. Thank you very much. It's been, uh, it's been really interesting to listen to Charles talk about the, the threat and you talk about the consequences of, 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 of ransomware and how uh, costly it can be for the companies that get hit by it. So what I'll talk about um, for, for, for my part of this is a new unique approach to, to dealing with a ransomware problem, one where we assume that at some point your organization will get hit by ransomware, one where we don't look for the malware itself, but rather the purpose of the ransomware, so the legitimate encryption, and, and one that will complement all of the security tools that you have in use in your organization um, today. So that, that is basically what I will be focusing on here. So brought up a couple of examples here of organizations that have been hit. We don't want to name and shame anybody specifically, but uh, what, what do all of these organizations have in common? Well, they're all big organizations with big IT budgets, big IT security teams, and then uh, typically using the best of breed prevention-based security that money can buy out there. And as Charles uh, referenced right at the beginning, the digital transformation is going very, very fast, and, and it also is going really, really rapid for the, uh, for the cyber criminals. They continue to find new ways to, to bypass, circumvent, or fool the existing security that is in place so that they can deploy the, the ransomware and deliver the purpose of it, which is the encryption of your data, so they can hold you, uh, uh, um, hold you prison, basically, and, and extort you for the money here. So today, it is uh, recognized by most of the industry that it is not possible any longer to do 100% uh, uh, prevention 100% of the time. We have to assume that at so, some point, uh, something is going to break through our defenses and then we need to be able to, uh, to deal with it at that point. So in most organizations around the world today, it's a law requirement that you, that you need to have smoke alarms and sprinkler systems installed. The, these these uh, companies that were headlined on the previous slide would, would, would be relying on prevention only. But if we look at it uh, uh, from an office perspective, you don't want an, a fire to happen in your office you want to try and avoid that, and, and, and to do that, you may have fireproof doors, uh, in, in installed fireproof construction. Your employees have, uh, have safety training, and you have fire extinguishers lo lo located in many different places. You will also install smoke detectors, and uh, an organization have that smoke detector in place because they are unsure if all of the other measures that I mentioned will work all of the time. So if at some point a fire is about to happen, smoke is developing, uh, you know, you will be notified. However, uh, if a big fire occurs, that smoke detector is not going to help you. It's not going to stop it. And therefore, organizations will uh, install sprinkler systems as, as well to save the buildings in the worst case scenario. So if we try and relate that to prevention-based security, then the antivirus or EDR, XDR solutions that we are running on the endpoints are basically uh, uh, the smoke detectors. So, so here they, they, they will alert us to the fact that something is going on in, in some instances. And, um, you know, they, with, with all that equipment in place, we might be able to extinguish some of the smaller fires. But suppose a big full-on ransomware attack unfolds in your environment and that encryption is running ram rampant. That's more like a massive fire in that case. And then they don't, uh, these organizations don't have the equivalent of the sprinkler system in place today. So they don't have anything to put out the fire. So in essence, adding that, that sprinkler system to your security infrastructure 
will enable you to move beyond that traditional way of protecting your organization. Today, we can't rely on the backups being available. Criminals knows, knows that you have backups. They will target them. They will either try and delete them or encrypt them as well uh, uh, when they attack you. So your backups may or may not be available uh, uh, after an attack. There are many organizations out there that, that issue constant warnings around ransomware. The, the Homeland Security, the FBI, and latest the G7 countries have all issued warnings. And what they're saying is that, that, that companies really need to move beyond traditional prevention-based perimeter and endpoint security today. It's not that we have to do it without it. You absolutely still need it, but you need something that can uh, detect and remediate malicious activity as it's being conducted on your network. And of course, when we look at the most damaging, disruptive, and costly of all the different types of malware, uh, which is ransomware, then that malicious activity is the illegitimate encryption of, of files in your environment. And that's, that's precisely what we look at um, with, 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 with the RC solution that I'm going to talk about. But before I do that, I just want to talk about um, a little bit about why, why our current defenses today are failing for so many organizations. So let's take a look at how almost all organizations globally protect themselves. So first, they will have a perimeter layer consisting of an email scanner. It could be a Mimecast or a Proofpoint solution, a corporate level firewall from somebody like Cisco or Palo Alto, and a web gateway in place. So that filters out a lot of the bat that comes in from the internet, and should anything bypass that perimeter protection, then behind that there is a first line of defense on the endpoint. So here there are 60 odd vendors that provide endpoint-based security, and uh, that tries to stop uh, things from executing in the environment itself. But today, uh, all of the endpoints in an organization will be accessing files from, from a, a data storage area, so a, a file share or maybe a, a, a share in the cloud, and they will save data back to that. And, and, and this layer is not really uh, uh, being protected um, today. So in essence, if we, um, if we move forward here, if, if a ransomware was to come into the organization, you know, uh, the, 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 the focus of the cyber criminals have shifted. They're not really out to, uh, to target just the endpoints anymore. They, if they encrypt a single laptop in your environment, you're unlikely to pay them a lot of money for a single laptop. But if they can get to the file shares or the, the, the data in the cloud, that's a very different story because now it's all of your users that are crippled. Nobody can access the data anymore. And for that reason, um, uh, the, the, the criminals will have the leverage at this point and will make it uh, quite diff difficult for you to, uh, to recover. So what we need to look at is, is, is protecting those file servers and the data storage platforms. Um, if, if a ransomware was to come in and bypass, for instance, the corporate level firewall or somebody clicks on an attachment from a stranger and that triggers a ransomware attack, it would typically uh, target one of the endpoints. It may here disable the EDR solution or the antivirus that's running. And then it will head for the file share where it will begin to encrypt anywhere from 6,000 6, to 10,000 files a minute. And from here, it would try and replicate itself onto other machines in the environment to speed up the pace of the attack. And before organizations that experience this realize what's going on, uh, all of the data has been encrypted. And now all of the users are completely crippled. They're not able to access any of the data that they depend on to do their day-to-day -day job. And this is what we see when, 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 when organizations and companies end up in the, in the news. So you've been infected. The, the, the ransomware is running rampant in your environment. What, what do we need to focus on now? Do we need to focus on forensics? Do we need to figure out which ransomware that we've been hit by? Do we need to try and figure out what vector they hit us by, how they got in, and how it executed? Sure, all of those things are important, but maybe at a later stage, the number one priority when the encryption begins has to be to stop that encryption as, as, as quickly as possible. So you need to be able to answer the questions that you see on the slide here. How do you see which files are being encrypted and where those files reside? Is it a, is it a file share in our local data center? Is it, is it perhaps Office 365 that's being encrypted? If we don't know where the data is being encrypted and we cannot pinpoint patient zero, 
So in other words, we cannot identify which user has been compromised and which, which device has initiated that attack. Well, then we, we, we stand only a very small chance of stopping it in time before it does irreparable damage to our, our data. So um, we also need to understand which files has been encrypted in order to, to, to be able to restore the right files. And we may need to accurately be able to report there's, there's many regulations in place uh, on, a, on a global scale where uh, a ransomware is considered a full data breach today. And if you have um, uh, personal identifiable information that is encrypted by ransomware, well, then that needs to be reported to, uh, to, 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 to the authorities as well. So at this point, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the RC solution and what it is that we do. So if we go back to this scenario, the simplified attack surface that I was talking about before, what we do with this solution is we put an extra last line of defense layer in place that protects the data storage area and the file shares on, 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 on premise or in the cloud. So if the ransomware again should come in and bypass the perimeter protection and uh, either disable the endpoint protection or, or fool it so it's not picked up, then the moment it heads for the file share and begins to encrypt files here, we instantly know which user has been compromised and which device has initiated that. And then we do um, isolation of that device. So, so as soon as it's been compromised, literally within milliseconds, and we'll show you in the demo in a second, then we, we, we shut that, that, that endpoint down and stop the encryption right there and then before it has a chance to replicate laterally in the, in the environment out to all of the other machines. So because we're dependent on the encryption itself, you will see maybe 10 or 20 files being encrypted before you react and shut it down. But that's infinitely better than having your entire uh, uh, file share and terabytes and terabytes of data wiped out by, by, by um, encryption where you don't have the encryption key. So in essence, uh, we will sit, we will listen in. Whenever a file is modified, renamed, created, uh, or deleted, we will take a quick peek at the heuristics of that file. And then uh, 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 we will obviously alert to the, to the IT team in, in, our response, in, in our response to the threat that, that we're under encryption attack. And then we will initiate a 24-7 a fully automated response that does not require any human interaction. So it doesn't matter whether it happens in the morning, overnight when nobody's working, or over the weekend when everybody is at home. Uh, the few files that were encrypted, we can help you recover very, very quickly. We know precisely which files were touched by the offending device, and, and we can export that uh, to your backup solution very quickly so, so, you, can, so you can recover that um, as, as, as soon as you're ready. And any reporting that needs to be done either internally to, to C-level or to, to the board or externally to, to, to regulators is fully automated in the tool as well. And the best bit about this solution is how it is constructed. It's, it's very, very lightweight. It's fast and easy to, uh, to install. It's an agentless tool, so we don't require any installation on any of your endpoints. We do not need to install anything on your existing file server infrastructure, nor on your storage platform. And we do not need write access to anything in, in your environment. Uh, we don't add any network overhead either because of the way that, that the solution operates. So the, the uh, immediate benefit here is that there is no performance degradation anywhere in your environment. The solution is completely complementary to all of your existing uh, security investments. And um, it's really, really quick and easy to roll out. So at this point, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Andy, and he's going to take you through a short, brief demonstration of the solution and how we shut down ransomware attacks. Thank you, Morton. Um, so one of the things you put is uh, a ransomware simulator. So what we have here is our ransom care um, dashboard, and I'll go into a little bit more detail on that in a second. But before I run that simulation, what I'd like to do is take you through some of the configuration steps within the tool. So the first thing we need to do is add the shares that we want to monitor. So these shares can reside in the cloud or in your data center, and all we require is really access. If we don't have the necessary permissions you can see here, we need to go back to that file share owner and ask for those permissions to be granted. Once we've added the file shares, we need to look at the different types of ransomware that we'll pick up on. 
The first one here on the right hand side is the known bad. So these are known bad extensions, artifacts, and file headers. So part of the description to the tool, we have a team in the back end that are regularly looking for these new strains of ransomware. And as soon as we come across these, we'll automatically push these to your dashboard. So what that means is as soon as it hits here, you are protected 100%. So once we know about the known bad, we look at, need to look at the known good data that resides in your organization. And this is done by looking at the file extensions, but more importantly, the heuristics of the file. So why this is important, because when you look at the new and the unknown strains of ransomware, what they're doing is coming into organizations and encrypting that data. By encrypting the data, we're actually changing the heuristics of the file, and with our built-in protection sensors, we're able to pick that up very, very quickly and put those isolation steps in place. So I'm now just going to jump onto our dashboard, and I'm going to simulate some traffic. So what you're seeing here on the left-hand side is what organizations would see. So this is our live log. And what's key to point out here is that we're not continually scanning your network. These are all file-based notifications. So as soon as someone touches a file, be it modified, created, deleted, or renamed, it's at this point we take that very small peek into the file to look at heuristics to see if any illegitimate encryption has taken place. But the beauty of this tool is that traffic already exists within your network, so we're not introducing any overhead whatsoever. In the center here, we have an activity live and shows at any given time the number of files that are modified, created, deleted, or renamed, and in just a couple of graphical interfaces on our dashboard. But what you're looking at now is just that good flow of data. At this point, nothing bad is actually happening. So what I'm going to do is I have a laptop which I'm remote controlling into, and I'm going to rename one of these files to a known bad ransomware variant. And you can see very, very quickly, if we go back to our dashboard, that within this live blog, an event has been generated. We know the type of breakdown that is based on our protection sensors, but more importantly, we're able to identify that individual. So in this particular scenario, all that's happened is this person has created a dot one acrylic file, but what we've given the IT team is the ability to very, very quickly identify that, go back to that individual and ask the question why they created the files in such a way. But because no further encryption has taken place, our alert level will actually start to decrease. However, if this individual was then to start creating these files again at a rapid pace, we'd very, very quickly reach the value that's been defined in our protection centers and put that isolation steps in place. So what I'm going to do now is jump back onto this laptop and I'm going to run a ransomware simulator. So I'm going to run here something called a DMA locker. And what this will do, it will go and encrypt the files. It doesn't change the file name, but it changes the file heuristics. So you can see my machine is now in the process of being shut down and isolated. And if I had sound on my server at the moment, what you'd be hearing is a World War II siren going off. As so well as all the alert mechanisms we have with uh, email, uh, WhatsApp, SMS, this dashboard could be up in your SOC center or your service desk. And you might not always be visually looking at it, but if you heard that sound, it would automatically draw your attention to the dashboard. So what we can see here is that ransomware has bypassed that first line of defense is actually starting to your files. We very quickly reach that 100% alert level based on our protection sensors. We know the type of breakdown that is, but more important, we're able to identify that individual and contain it very, very quickly. So you saw from the isolation steps, we, we pushed the full shutdown to that device, but we can also integrate into Active Directory and disable that user's account to prevent any, that user from logging back onto that device. So we've detected, we actually respond, we now need to look at the recovery process. So as Morton mentioned in the tool, we have the ability to generate some reports. So as you can see here, we have a report which is a click of a button, but it gives us information about the attack that just happened. So we know the start time, we know the end time, but more importantly, we can put in a summary, the location, the server, and then identify the list of files and encryption taken place. So as we know the exact location where that encryption has taken place, it's going to help in that restoration process. So at a very high level, this is what I wanted to show you today. Thank you very much for watching the demo. If you'd like to see a more in-depth demo of the RC and show you how we can detect on different ways around and make it your organization, please let us know. Thank you very much. At this point, I'd like to hand back to, to John Stewart to continue the presentation. Thank you very much, Andy and, and Morton, for all that, that great information. So, you know, we have a, a number of ways uh, for folks to take advantage of um, finding out some more information or, or trying to dig deeper into the ransom care solution powered by Bullwall from RICO. Uh, we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one live demo 
um, with your organization. You can take a look at some of our pre-recorded videos that that showcase this in case you want to look back at it. Um, you know, we can help perform uh, a cost analysis on potential downtime based on your size organization and your business. Uh, and we can do an assessment if you'd like to do a, a full proof of concept in your environment. Uh, we can also schedule that for you. So we have a lot of ways that you know you can take advantage of uh, the ransom care solution. I did want to also highlight some of the things you heard from uh, Trolls, Morton, and Andy about the need for a multi-layered security approach. Right, a lot of organizations feel like if they have that endpoint protection, that they're covered. Um, but as you've seen from all the information presented today, that is just one part of a full multi-layered security approach. And the ransom care solution is that last line of defense that is very complementary to whatever you may have today, whether you manage it yourself or whether you have a managed security provider. The ransom care solution can be complementary and help make your security strategy even stronger. So I'd like to thank everyone for um, you know, attending the webinar today, and I'd like to move us into our question and answer period. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, we have a number of questions in the chat currently. I'm, I'm going to try to get them out to the team here so we can answer them so uh, everyone is uh, well informed. Um, the first question is a question that we see quite often. We tried to address it in the webinar, but I think it's worth coming back to. Um, you know, is the ransom care solution different from antivirus or traditional endpoint protection? And does it work in conjunction with that, those type of solutions? And Morton, I think you should take that question. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, good question. So it is completely complementary to your existing antivirus solution and will actually strengthen that. The antivirus solution sit and protects the endpoint. We, we, we look at the data layer, so the, the, um, the file shares in your on-premise data center or any any uh, data storage areas in the cloud. So yeah, we, uh, we will work with other antivirus solutions as well. We have done integrations into Symantec's EDR solution, McAfee, Microsoft Defender, ATP, and we can utilize um, some of the shutdown mechanisms that, that those tools on the endpoints are providing to shut down endpoints when we respond to an outbreak of, uh, of encryption in your environment. Great, thanks, Morton. And I think a follow-up to that question is one that we've seen from a handful of customers recently, which is, you know, there's a number of larger organizations that work with a company uh, like CrowdStrike, who is kind of a managed security services provider. Um, and some of those customers feel like that it's all covered with, uh, with a CrowdStrike type solution. Um, can you comment on, you know, is it, is it, complementary but necessary to have like the ransom care solution when you are working with some CrowdStrike? It, it is a very good idea to still have that extra layer on top. CrowdStrike is still prevention based and it's still um, uh, focused on the endpoints. So it doesn't, if that gets fooled and something gets by and starts to encrypt at that point, it is too late for CrowdStrike or any of the the, 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 the newer solutions out there on the market to do anything anyway. So this is a completely complementary layer that, 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 that we add that protects the, the, the data layer. We offer a ransomware assessment test where we have tested against CrowdStrike uh, a number of times and, and have been able to do encryption on, on files in, in folders without, without CrowdStrike seeing that encryption. So. Although there is a number of very, very good prevention-based solutions on, on the market, all the experts agree, it's not a question of, of if you get hit, but when you get hit by ransomware, what do you have to put out the fire the moment the ransomware begins in your environment? And that's what we are there for. Okay, great, great, Morton. Um, I've got even more questions flying in on the chat right now. Um, uh, one of the questions, just to be clear, the solution protects file share resources in the cloud only. That's a question. Uh, it does okay. not protect data residing on any of the endpoint devices themselves across the network. That is two questions. Yeah, so it is correct. We do not protect data on the endpoint. You already have endpoint security that is meant to do that job. 
we protect data not just in the cloud, also in on-premise data centers. Any, any file shares that you have, whether they are cloud-based or whether they are in your own data center, we can monitor for you. And as soon as illegitimate encryption begins on any of those shares, we, we can stop it as quickly as you saw in the demo, so literally within milliseconds. And there's a big difference between seeing 20 files being encrypted and having terabytes and terabytes of data encrypted that wasn't stopped because the endpoint didn't pick up on it, and then it, then, it, then, it, then it attacked the file shares and eliminated all the data. Remember, the criminals will not, will not really target your endpoints. They, they want to get to the common file shares where all the users go to, to access their data, to do their day-to-day -day job. If they hit those, they have the leverage. They cripple the entire company rather than just one or two users. Gotcha. And here's another question. Uh, with the number of phone-based scams, what is the likelihood that a compromised personal smart device could compromise a business network by active remote control of the smart device or automated methods? So I would say that it's, it's a relatively um, uh, small likelihood that that, that would happen. I'm, I'm not an expert in this area, but what I will say is you are fully capable of sharing malware from your mobile device with Office 365 or Google Drive. So indirectly, you could potentially uh, uh, release an attack. And you could also, we have seen encryption uh, attack being started from mobile, uh, from mobile devices or IoT devices. So again, we don't care how the ransomware gets in, whether it's started by, by a, a, a plugging in a USB stick or a user clicking on an attachment or um, you know, however else the encryption could start. We, we don't care about how it got in. We don't, we don't look for the malware itself. We look for the purpose of ransomware, which is the, the illegitimate encryption of your files, and that's what we react to. So, so we save the data rather than the devices and the endpoints because there's already 60 other vendors on the endpoints that are trying to, uh, to protect your, 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 your data on the individual endpoint. Gotcha. Uh, there's a number of questions around the cost model. I'll just try to handle those separately offline. But in general, there's, there's two ways to subscribe to the service. You can pay for a one, three, five-year subscription up front, or the service can be provide, can be provided in managed service price. Excuse me, managed service provider model, where there's a monthly per device cost. Um, and for those who've asked questions about costs, I will answer you directly via email after the webinar. Uh, there was another question about where does the appliance sit within the network structure? Uh, Morton, I think you can comment to that. It's not an appliance. We just yeah. require a we, virtual we, we, machine, correct? Correct. We need you to stand up a virtual server for us, VMware Hyper-V, and we will install RC on that. And once that is configured, we point it to the file shares that we need to monitor. So it is completely agentless. There is nothing to install on any of your existing endpoints, nothing to install on your server infrastructure, and nothing to install on your, your storage platform. It's just one server. As soon as we update that server with any updates from our side, your entire environment is, is protected. You don't need to roll signatures and updates out to all of your hundreds or even thousands of endpoints. So it's, it's, it's a very non-intrusive solution. It's very quick and easy to stand up. Typically, it takes us one to two days uh, with, with one or two of your technical guys to get the solution up and running. Um, uh, many enterprises today, many big companies, are used to IT and cybersecurity deployments taking weeks or months. Here we're talking about a, a couple of days. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a relatively quick win. More another question, uh, is this classified as a SIEM solution? Uh, no, this is not a SIEM solution. We can, we can integrate with SIEM solutions and should um, illegitimate encryption of files begin, we can send alert to SIEM systems. We've done integrations into IBM Q Radar or Rapid7 or similar SIEM systems. So, so SIEM systems will pick up um, uh, alerts from, from, uh, from different events happening in your environment and we can contribute into the SIEM system and send our alerts to that if, if that is a preference. We, we have a two-way open API in our tool. 
so we can integrate with a with really a very wide variety of your existing security um, investments, if you like. Okay. Uh, another question for those who use you know Office 365 or the Microsoft 365 platform. You know, a lot of the data is stored within SharePoint. It's accessed through different front ends like Teams, OneDrive, Outlook, even. Um, does the does the ransom care solution work in conjunction with that platform? Yes, it works in conjunction with uh, with SharePoint and with Teams and with OneDrive. So it works in in all of those scenarios. And kind of an add-on to that, can ransom care be installed in a Microsoft Azure environment? Yes, it can, and it can also be installed uh, on a Windows server in in AWS. Right. So, so regardless of what cloud platform they might be on, IBM Cloud, whatever it might be, it, the ransom care solution can be utilized. Yes, uh, if if it's a Windows if it's a Windows server that's sitting in a in a cloud environment, a Windows share that needs to be monitored, we 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 can do that. Okay, great. Um, one last question. Can a managed service provider or a managed security service provider run this as a service for its clients with the management dashboard at the managed service provider? Yeah, good question. And yes, the answer is you can. We we um, we have an MSP dashboard available, and you can manage for, for for all of the customers in your environment. So if you have, say, 50 or 100 customers that are subscribed to your MSP services, uh, RC can be installed with them, and you will have one common dashboard that, that manages all of those customers for you. Okay, and we'll, we'll go with one, one last question. Um, if someone does a, a an assessment um, or you know within their environment, what what do, can they expect to get with that assessment? Or or so with that? with the assessment, we will we will uh, first of all we will prove the concept front to back in your data stream. Uh, we will also test whether your existing security solutions pick anything up when we simulate a ransomware attack. So we will go in and create a test folder. On, on a share on a server, we will populate with that with some data, and then we will attack that folder with encryption and begin to encrypt files. And we will see whether your SIEM system, your SOC center, your antivirus solution, and everything else that you have enabled in your environment picks up that encryption attack. And then um, we will do three, three different attacks. Once we've done that, we enable the RC server, and we run the, the same three tests with the RC server enabled to, to show the, 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 the difference and, and, the, and the speed of detection and the, and the shutdown that we do of the, of the machines. But in less than two hours, we can install and prove the whole concept front to back. And at the end of it, we can provide you with an assessment report that will give you the result of those, uh, those six tests that I just described now. So that, that's what you would get with the assessment. Okay, great, Morton. I'm going to uh, cut the questions there. Anyone who did get to your question, we will certainly answer you via email. Uh, I, again, wanted to thank everyone for attending the webinar today. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions you'd like to send to us, please do so. Otherwise, uh, anyone who has a question who didn't get answered today and anyone who requested more information or, or pricing structure will certainly get that out to you. But thank you to everyone on the RICO team who have put this together. Thank you for everyone attending, and most importantly, thank you to our friends at Bullwall for their help with uh, pre pre preparing and presenting this webinar. Have a great day, and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you.